What's up y'all, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. Now this is gonna be part two of a video I released last Sunday, which is Honda HRX versus Toro Super Recycler. But I promised you guys in that video because the lawn was so overgrown and I, I was kind of rushed a little bit and in a hurry and really just having more fun than anything. I didn't feel like I was able to give those mowers a good review, mostly because the lawn was super overgrown and I just didn't like the cut I was getting. But I'm actually filming this on Sunday afternoon. So the reason that's important is because the lawn is not overgrown now. Well, actually the floor tan back there, it's overgrown, it's always overgrown, it's floor tan. But the rest of my lawn, my Palmetto St. Augustine grass, which is right there, and my Zoysia grass, which is over there, those are not overgrown. And in fact, it's been now, let's see, I cut with my son. We did that video filming last Wednesday, today's Sunday. So, and it's about the same time of day. So it's been Wednesday to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So four days, this is the perfect time. This is right about when I should cut every three or four days or so. We've actually had quite a bit of rain. So it's growing pretty well, but not overgrown. So this is a perfect test now for both the Zoysia and the Palmetto St. Augustine of what it's like for these mowers to cut grass and pretty much obeying the one third rule while we do it. In other words, it's not overgrown. But before we go getting too crazy, there's one thing that I want to do that I neglected to do in the last video and the first thing is is I didn't actually even finish cutting my lawn so that's really bad I admitted that in the last video you guys can check that out but even more so than that I don't like the way these edges look when I'm doing a lawnmower review I like to have crispy edges right Brandon Davis so before we continue with this review I'm gonna get everything trimmed and edged and looking good and then we'll go through with everything else so stay tuned I hope you enjoy the video I wanted to point out here real quick, I was watching a Ryan Knorr video linked below not long ago where he talked about string trimming walking forward versus backward. Something I had never noticed about the way the head spins and then I've had people make comments before that the way I walk, which is forward, throws clippings into the beds and I've been noticing that lately but either way it's something I want to explore a little bit more because I've trained myself to walk forward when I string trim and I cannot walk backwards so I got to learn some new stuff and I figured that'd be a fun thing to do in videos upcoming. One thing's for sure, I never claim to be an expert when it comes to equipment. My thing's all about spraying and praying and spreading fertilizer and stuff like that. And I got as much to learn about equipment as anybody. So just wanted to let you know that'll be some content coming up in the future here. Something fun for me to learn. And you can certainly leave comments below giving me advice on where to start and how to learn. Okay, so I got the edges done. They're not perfect, but... Uh... I'll do them again after I mow. This is just the preliminary and they're much better. So, okay. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test on the Zoysia. Now, where I made a mistake last time was, you know, when I was doing the first test, it was highest setting. Second test, second to the highest setting. And that's okay, but you have to realize that but both of these mowers have seven settings, but they're much different. And, and, in even, and even the space between is much different. In other words, the Honda mows as low as three quarter inches on the bottom setting, whereas the Toro starts at one and a quarter. So they're a half inch off in the very beginning. Yet when you get to the seventh position or the highest position, the Honda's at four inches, but the Toro is only at four and a quarter. So it's only a quarter inch higher. You see that? So they don't go up evenly. So when you get down to the lower settings, you're off really quick. And that's where I made the mistake is I took the Honda down too fast thinking it was the Toro and I ended up scalping the lawn now you can see it's recovered very very well right here is where I scalped it I'll show you I ran the Honda straight down through there and when I got up about to the tree it just shut off it was just too much So that was too low and uh, the Honda shut off on me. I did not like that, but it doesn't seem like it's scalping, but I guess it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and Then what I did is I raised the Honda up and I went ahead and kept going, but that all messed it up. So either way, this over here is all a little bit lower. So we're not gonna mess with that. And for our test today, we're gonna keep everything simple. I'm gonna do one pass up and one pass back with the Honda and one pass up and one pass back with the Toro. And that's how we're gonna do our test. Before I do that, I need to get them equal. Well, at least as equal as I can. So with the Honda, what I've done is I've elected to go at setting three. At setting three, which by the way, the Honda's more logical. Like when you're on setting four, that's four inches. When you're on setting three, that's three inches. When you're on setting two, that's two inches. Like it's pretty logical through that part, which is kind of nice. But either way, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go at three inches because my only other choice was to go down a notch, which I think is gonna be too low. And then my closest setting here is gonna be the D setting, which is actually one, two, three, four. It's actually a notch lower, but that's how it comes up with the Toro. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Honda up and back, and then I'm gonna take the Toro up and back, and we're gonna compare, and that's gonna be it, nice and simple.
Okay, so I don't know how the audio is on this. This is my actual Sony camcorder, and it shoots it shoots in 4K, but I'm not doing that today. I am 1060p though, so this still should be pretty good. So I left a, a spot right down the middle uncut, so that way we can take a nice, easy look. So the first thing let's do, let's go right down the Honda line. Here we go. Here's the Toro line. Of torpedo grass in here too. See this? This is torpedo grass. I always try to give you guys extra tips in these videos. Last time I showed you invading Bermuda. This is invading torpedo grass. I got some quinclorac I can spray on that. I tried it earlier. It worked real well. But now that we're in the rainy season, it's starting to flare up again. So I gotta, I gotta knock it out. But by the way, this technique of just keeping everything on the tripod right there and just not editing that out, I learned that from my friend Grass Daddy. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for the tip, brother. Okay, so... Alright, same deal as before. I'm going to take a nice run right down there with the Honda and a nice run right down there with the Toro and then we're going to compare them side by side.
Okay, here we are low with the Honda. And, uh, yeah, it misses quite a few, actually, but I th that's very normal, really. I can't remember who it was, but if I can find the comment, I'll paste it. He said he's got St. Aug, too, and he always double cuts. And, you know, I take it for granted. I always double cut, too. I think most of the professional companies around here do, too. Here, let me get out of, let me get that debris out of there. So I was saying, as I was saying, I think most of the professionals around here double cut, too, especially front lawns where people care the most. St. Aug is just a finicky grass type, and by its growth habit, you know, it's not all standing up straight all the time when you cut even though you might think it is. Yeah, I take for granted, I always double cut anyway. It's just how you do with St. Aug, so. There you go. That's the Honda cut. And again, you'll see when I stand up, it looks good. You just, you know, you're way low right now. So you see everything. This is what happens when you cut St. Aug when it's wet. Can you see those tips? Let's see if I can zoom in for you. That's why you don't cut St. Aug wet. That's what it does. Those tips all shrivel up and that allows disease to get into the plant very easily. Talked about this on the podcast this week, actually. Say, Alan, have you been cutting the lawn wet? Well, I think it's pretty obvious that I have had. I ain't perfect. I know there's some guys that tell you they're perfect, but I ain't perfect. Okay, now here's the Toro. Close down. You guys tell me what you think. Yeah, I'm seeing about the same number of missed blades in here. I was real careful to do the overlap the same. I'm going wheel to wheel. You probably could do even more. Now just so you guys know, I typically don't mow wheel to wheel. I do a bigger overlap, just maybe that's my way of double cutting. I only do a half overlap. That's probably another video we could do is like how much overlap do you do? I do a lot of overlap. Even with my Time Master, I do a lot of overlap. So that might be part of the reason why I'm expecting this perfect cut because really I just do a much larger overlap most of the time. So a few of you had asked me to go ahead and compare the Time Master cut real quick, and I wanted to go ahead and sharpen the blade so everything was the same. But just real quick, you guys know I'm a fan of iconography, and you can see on the stock blades of the Toro Time Master here, that's not a funky number four. That's actually designed to show you the position of the blade so you don't put it on backwards, which is something that I am well known for. Now, I go an extra step, and I actually mark the lawn side of the blade with a pencil. That way I'm double sure that I put the blades back on the correct way. Another thing I'd like to thank the many of you that warned me about sharpening my blade around my vehicles. Apparently the shrapnel that flies off can nick your paint or your windows and other things. So thanks very much to those of you that gave me that warning. That's something I would have never thought of. Okay, so let's look and see how the Time Master did. Also, I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but I'm getting some uh, I'm getting some leaf spot in here, a little worse than I'm normally used to seeing. So I might have to do a treatment on this. But let's uh, let's go ahead and zoom down. Now you're going to see, you'll be able to see on the overlap that there's also some misses. So I don't typically, I typically don't overlap this much. I usually keep my passes with more overlap I guess is the way to say it but anyway let's zoom on down through there see what we see Okay, when it's all said and done on those two, I think they were pretty much the same. Getting way down there real close, I mean, they really look the same. I'll review the footage, you can review the footage, make a decision for yourself, but I really think this one, as I've always said, is gonna come down more to comfort and enjoying the mow. I'm, I'm really thinking that these two mowers are really on par. Um, couple different things, again, if you need to lo mow lower, if you, for some reason, think you need to mow down lower than one and a quarter inches, well, then you gotta go with the Honda because it goes down to 0.75 inches. Whereas if you think you need to go up higher than four inches, then you have to choose the Toro because it mows up to four and a quarter. So those are just two like physical limitations of the things, but of the mowers, but other than that, I mean, results look great. Of course, the Zoys is real pretty too. 
one last thing. A lot of people who have the Honda have said it doesn't mulch very well. And I did discover that and share it in a video a few weeks ago. And then here just yesterday, I was mowing the Zoysia with the Honda and the same thing. It definitely leaves some areas that could have been mulched up much better than they were. I do not have this problem with the Toro Super Recycler. That said, there's one more important distinction I wanted to make, and that is based on the way that these mowers drive, or the self-propulsion system, both are rear-wheel drive, self-propelled. However, the Honda's more of an active mow. I've likened it to driving an Audi. You're up on it. And then on the other side, you've got the Toro, which uses the personal pace system, which is more of a leisurely mow. You're, you're kind of sitting back driving a luxury car, nice and comfortable going down the road. However, that distinction can become an advantage or disadvantage, depending on your lawn. If you have a lawn with a lot of obstacles and circles and things that you need to go around, then the active mow of the Honda will be much more comfortable for you. Whereas if your lawn is wide open and you have a lot of straight runs, then you're probably going to enjoy the personal pace a little bit better. You'll notice on sharp turns with the Super Recycler, I almost have to pick the front wheels up. Whereas with the Honda, I can hold the drive wide open and slide it around a curve like a race car. Okay guys, well I hope you've enjoyed another long video on cut quality of lawn mowers. I think what I've actually realized here is probably when you get that low down for any lawnmower, when your lawn is not perfectly, you know, flat or as one guy put it, smooth. Thank you. That was somebody on my podcast corrected me on that. I was talking about lawns being smooth versus level. He said, no, no, no. It needs to be smooth. Exactly right. Anyway, uh, back to that. You know, I was running across the parts of my lawn that are not as, as flat as they probably could be. So probably when you get down that low in any cut, it's going to look like that. I don't know. You know, I'm not some guru on equipment here. You guys know I don't really do too many equipment reviews. This is probably why. Um, the other thing I realized, though, is, is I probably double cut and have double cut for years just by the way that I overlap when I mow. I, I, I end up double cutting. I guess I just do that. Maybe I just enjoy the mow even more. But the long and the short of it is I hope these videos have been helpful to you. I hope you've seen some different things. I will link the individual reviews to each one of these mowers because that's where I talk about some of the other things, especially when I talk about enjoying the mow with the mower. So that's important to look at. And if you're somebody that's making a decision, I hope this video and the last video have been helpful to you. Leave your comments below. Again, tell me some different things I might be able to do or look at or what you might want to see. And, you know, maybe we'll do a little bit more here. But at the end of the day, I hope uh, that as uh, Maximus says, that you're entertained. So with that, I'm Alan Hayne, The Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the lawn.